OK, uh, we're going to vibe code a Sudoku constructor. I'm going to start with ChatGPT. This is ChatGPT 4.0, as you can see. I'm going to use uh, a temporary chat so it doesn't use the memory from prior chats, because I have a lot of puzzle-related conversations with ChatGPT, and I want to see how it behaves just out of the box without any of that stuff in its memory. And I'm going to give it a very generic prompt in an attempt to do a one-shot program. It might work. Write a program. I'll say write a script. That'll it's a little little helpful. Write a script that constructs Sudoku puzzles. Go. Um, it chose Python. Good. I would have normally asked for it. It generates uh, a grid. This might actually work. This is removing the numbers. And it is counting solutions. OK, this might work. The first time I did this, it did not check the solutions as it removed the numbers, and it was producing invalid puzzles. One thing I don't like about this particular program is that it's printing out the grid in rows and numbers. But it, it, it should work. I'm going to copy this and paste it into my uh, editor. We'll call this, um, I'll save this as test GPT 4.0 version 1. Let's run it. You can see I've already run an old one there. Test GPT 4.0 version 1. And that has taken a long time. Uh, it might, might not work. Or it might just be really slow. The brute force algorithm it was using to solve it didn't look particularly great. Yeah, it's taken a long time. So I'm going to try to fix it. <laughs> I'll say um, this script is either not working or taking a very long time to produce a puzzle. The solver may be too slow. Can you fix it? course, when you suggest something, it always says, you're absolutely right. What a awesome suggestion. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and interrupt this, and we'll see if the modified version is any better. I'm not even going to read it. <laughs> and this will be version 2. I have high hopes. Yeah. Very good. Now. Um, modify the output to print the puzzle on one line is a long string rather than individual rows. Then add a command line argument to specify the number of puzzles. The puzzles will be printed one, one per line. One per line. OK, go. Do, 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 do. This will be our version three. Let's see if it how it does. It's using arg parse for the argument. Looks decent. Copy that. Version three. There we go. Let's try one of these. Am I getting different ones each time? Yeah. So let's try a few of these just to make sure they're valid. Looks good. Looks good. Let's look at the code again. OK, this is decent. Um, so you can see that basically the way that the puzzle is generated is it generates a valid answer that has the, the grid entirely filled um, using this fill grid function. It copies it. Then it removes numbers from the grid up to a certain point. Each time, uh, so, it, so it, it shuffles the cells so the numbers are removed in a random order. Otherwise, you'd get more numbers removed from the top than the bottom of the puzzle. Uh, so it shuffles them. It is walking through each of the cells, removing it from the grid, and then doing um, a test solving of the puzzle using this count solutions to make sure that the number of solutions is one. The problem is, is that if you remove too many givens, 
the puzzle becomes ambiguous and you get multiple solutions. So you have to ensure that there's still a single solution to the puzzle as you remove the numbers. And that's basically it. This is what I call a sieve algorithm. It's uh, what I mostly use for puzzle construction. However, there's one difference, important difference in the way that I typically construct puzzles, which is that I don't use a brute force solver, which is what's being used here. This is a this after after we asked it to make it faster, it, it did do a better brute force solver. This is a nice fast uh, puzzle generator, as you can see. So if I generate 100 puzzles, it generates them nice and quickly, which is great. We would want to add more options. We would want to be able to seed the random number generator. We, uh, but we also probably want to be able to control difficulty, and that is difficult to do here. The problem with the brute force um, puzzle solver, which is what's being used here, is, is very simple, and it is typically what LLMs will generate when you ask them to generate Sudoku generators. Uh, the problem with them is that they don't have any understanding of how difficult the puzzle is for humans. They will generate puzzles that are very easy, and they'll also generate puzzles that are extremely hard and tedious that really can only be solved using trial and error. And as someone who publishes puzzles, I prefer not to publish that type of puzzle. There is a small audience for that type of puzzle, so when I do publish puzzles like that, I try to label them as such. The Sudoku puzzles that are like that on my site are, are called insane, and there is a small audience for insane puzzles, but most people don't like them. They're tedious to solve. So that's the thing, is, is you, you really need a, a solver that doesn't just use brute force, that solves the puzzle more than the way a human does. Can you do that with vibe coding? Yes, but you would need to have a pretty good understanding of what you want to do and use much uh, smaller, more granular prompts to do it. It's not hard to one-shot vibe code a Sudoku constructor. This is because there are a lot of Sudoku construction examples online. Because there's so much training material, you can do Sudoku pretty easily. Things get a little harder once you want to do more obscure puzzles. And if you want to invent brand new puzzles, um, it can be difficult to one-shot them. You can definitely, uh, by doing more granular prompting, do more interesting puzzles. But what, the further away you get from Sudoku, the less likely you'll be able to just one-shot it. In future videos, I'm going to cover how to create a puzzle constructor for a non-Sudoku puzzle, a more interesting puzzle. And I'll show the methods that I use for solving the puzzles, which involve uh, production rule systems. And uh, we'll make something um, that's uh, a little more usable for someone that wants to uh, publish puzzles for humans to solve and enjoy. If you're interested, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you soon.